Welcome to Narrow Ground Entertainment. I'm Steve the Unimpressed. This is episode 5 of COVID Besieged. Since several of my family members have tested positive for COVID-19, I am stuck at home and can't work, so I'm passing the time by making a YouTube video a day. So I'm making a video in seven days to die every day until I can go back to work. Yesterday I went and dug up a treasure off in the southeast direction over here and uh, got killed a lot by cougars on the way. So I'm going to try to stay out of the ice and snow a little bit today and hopefully I will find less hazardous things over here in the forest biome. I had been looking at the resources that I have available to me and realized that unless I harvest a lot of small stones in the very near future, I will not actually have the materials by day seven to make the uh, tower fortification that I usually build for the, for the seventh day zombie horde. So I'm going to be spending some time thinking about what I might be able to do instead. Usually I would get that many rocks from having deepened this hole further in the first few days, but partly my lack of iron tools right now is preventing me from doing that, and partly the lack of time spent down in that hole. Several of the nights so far in this series, I have spent more time doing other things in, the, in my base, or not in the base at all, out in the world fighting things, or sneaking back across the countryside trying not to die. Uh, that usually I would have spent digging and gathering rocks. So I will have to decide what I'm going to do instead of building that fortification right away. I might be able to build a smaller version of it with only a couple of towers, and the other option that I have thought of so far is to take over this barn that I looted in an earlier episode and spend the, the first seventh day horde in that barn in the upper level and fight zombies from there. So that would also be an option. For now though, I'm going to start the day with a trip over to the trader to dispose of the uh, extra schematics that I got in yesterday's episode and uh, see if there's anything useful in the trader's inventory. I am actually back to the trader for a second time. I did not bring most of my money with me. And there are several things in his inventory that I want to buy. I'm also going to sell this old cash. One interesting thing about this uh, buying and selling system to me is that for some reason, old money still converts at a better than one-to-one -one ratio to the the game currency, the Duke's Casino tokens. So, I can sell 933 old cash for 1,371 uh, Duke's Casino tokens. So, why isn't the old cash still just a currency? Whatever. But, there are several things in his inventory that I want to buy. The first is this helmet light mod, which is the same concept as the mining helmet that I have I pursued in my earlier Seven Days to Die series, but it can just be installed into any helmet. I have not found a mining helmet, but I do have a helmet, so I'll add that to it. The second thing I want to buy from him is a wrench. Uh, wrenches allow you to harvest the parts from mechanical objects or appliances, so the cars that we see around in the world or the toasters or refrigerators, that kind of stuff that I've seen in houses, you can break those down into useful components. The third thing I'm going to buy is this tactical assault rifle. This weapon is new for, the, for this update, for Alpha 19. This was not available before. It's part of the machine gun family that I did check in, in the description and it scraps to machine gun parts which I probably will scrap this eventually because it's a very low quality gun, but it's better than no guns, or better than muzzle loader guns. There's also another volume of the, the Sniper book series that I'm trying to accumulate, so I'm going to go ahead and buy that. Now I'll have two of those red, and I had mentioned needing springs to craft a rifle, so I'm going to buy enough of those to be able to craft a rifle once I am able to craft a workbench. Um, springs are one of the things that I can get now 
in loot or from looting with the wrench from breaking down uh, mechanical devices. But just in case I don't uh, get any of those, I will buy just enough to complete a rifle, which would be two. So I'm going to buy two of those. And I still have quite a bit of money left over. Was there something else? Nope, that's it, Hugh. Thanks. Now, before I even go out of here, I am going to remove my helmet and modify it and add this helmet light to it. And then I can use the F key to turn on my helmet, or my helmet light. The helmet light will be a big help if I'm looting any more dark areas, which this house was. I would really have liked to have had that when I was looting that place. I retrieved the rest of the ammo f that I had for the, uh, or the 7.62 ammo, which is what the machine guns and the rifles all use. So I've got 80, 83 more rounds for this. It did come loaded in the first place. I'm not going to test it out until I find some zombies to test it against. No point in just firing wildly. Hopefully the next time I run into a cougar, I will have something better to deal with it than I did the last time. I did leave the second blunderbuss behind, because once you start having a car having cartridge weapons with actual magazines that you don't have to reload between every shot, uh, carrying multiple blunderbusses will fill up your hotbar quite quickly, and uh, you need other things in those spaces. It also fills up your inventory, and you need that for carrying loot home. I'd bypassed this place when I was going to set up my my base originally, so let's check it out now. And as long as we have a zombie in front of us, let's uh, see how this gun works. Quite effectively, as it turns out. I was expecting there to be more than one zombie in this house, so I thought that shot would have been heard. But, it wasn't. Perhaps he was the only one, or perhaps the zombies are just a little bit deaf. I do have my lockpicks with me. Apparently you can't just pick the locks on these doors. There, it got dark inside, helmet light already on. Already proving useful. This looks like most of the valuables in the house, so I will just go ahead and help myself. <laughs> Well, we got yet another blunderbuss out of that. Can't hurt to have a bunch of them. I hear footsteps. Now this fridge is exactly the type of appliance that I'm going to break down with the wrench when I find them. Because this one is not a loot container, so I don't really have to be worried about breaking it down. No loot is going to spawn in it. There's no loot in it to begin with, so it won't respawn there. It's just a broken fridge. With a bunch of spoiled food still in it, apparently. Harvesting it with the wrench, however, turns it into a bunch of useful pieces. 
I have some scrap iron here, which I need for many things in the forge. Some mechanical parts, some electrical parts, and some short iron pipes. All of those will be useful in time. Ah, those are useful. Let me just drink something quickly. And then I will explain why. Or, you can read the text and that will explain why. They have actually apparently powered these up a little bit in the Alpha 19 update. In Alpha 18, all they did, the only bonus you got from these was the XP gain. But that was enough to make me wear them almost constantly. In this version, they also increase your, your intellect stat by a little bit. And they uh, decrease the crafting time of anything you're making, apparently. Well, that went poorly. Went worse for him, though. Alright, I actually wound up with quite a few valuable things from this place. We got various parts, some iron pipes, another blunderbuss, which even if I don't use it is good for selling, aloe cream, which will let me make some bandages that will help me uh, regain my health after I get into inadvised fights with wildlife and zombies, and jars of honey. These are one of the antibiotic medications. So now if I get infected by something, I actually have something to deal with it. It's not as good as the antibiotic medicine that you can find in the game, but it's a, a good start. What I would really like to run across out here at the moment is a surface iron ore deposit, and I know I have seen some before and did not mark the locations. Oh, well that's fortunate. Actually, here is one of them now. This is probably one that I've seen before, too, because it's pretty close to my base. Now, harvesting some of this will allow me to have enough iron ore when I get home to get some of the forged iron that I need going. And once I have enough of that, I will be able to make a workbench, because I have the other parts that I need for the most part. I need some iron to make a hammer, and that is one of the last things I need for a workbench. And once I have a workbench made, I will be able to make a rifle. I have made it back to base with uh, quite a lump of iron to get me started and a number of other, other things. I'm going to go ahead and start some of that iron melting down. That way I can get the, the forged iron that I need. I need, I think, 53 to get all the way to a rifle, and I think I have enough iron to get most of the way there, if not all the way there. Unfortunately, my forge right now makes forged iron faster than it melts uh, scrap iron, so I'll have to wait a little bit. That is okay, though, because after I deposit some of my goods in here, I need to make another trip over to the trader. He has a second wrench for sale, and I didn't buy it right away because I wasn't sure if I would need it, but a wrench is one of the things that you need to make a workbench. So, in order to still have one for myself, I would like to go and buy that second one from him so that I can keep this one. I made it back from the trader with my second wrench, so with a little bit of luck, by the end of the night I will have a workbench. Assuming, of course, that zombies don't break down my walls and kill me. Actually, it doesn't matter that much if they kill me, I'll respawn. It matters more if they break the forge. Or the workbench. The other thing that the claw hammer is useful for, which is the other tool that's required to make the workbench, so I'll be losing this fairly soon, even though I just made it. It upgrades these uh, wood frame blocks, or any block that you need to upgrade, uh, significantly faster than the stone hammer does. With the stone axe, you have to hit it three times, or use the secondary action three times to upgrade the block. With the claw hammer, you only have to do it twice. 
So I will make another one of these in the relatively near future, but the priority for me right now is the workbench and the rifle, because the rifle will make more efficient use of my 7.62 ammunition than I currently am able to do. And I don't have quite enough iron in the forge to make enough forged iron to complete all my goals. So what I'm going to do is melt down some of the extra things that I have acquired that are made of iron and will smelt into iron to round off what I need. And that includes these three extra cooking pots. Usually I would save at least one or two of those, but right now I need the iron more than I need extra cooking pots, and I'll find more of them eventually anyway. So, into the forge they go. Sadly, I've discovered that I made something of a calculation error in my hopes that I would have a workbench by the end of the night. I forgot that one of the components required for the workbench is mechanical parts, and a lot of them. You need 20. I only have one. In fact, I had none until I broke down that fridge earlier today. So unfortunately, I'm not going to reach that goal in this episode. That will have to be a goal for the next episode, and I think the next episode is going to involve a flurry of taking apart appliances with the wrench, and from them gathering the mechanical parts that I need for a workbench. But that's alright, because I wasn't able, wouldn't have been able to craft a rifle in this episode yet anyway. I need to buy one more skill perk before I can craft rifles. I was able to buy the one that allows me to make iron tools and make the hammer, and I was able to buy the one that allows me to make the workbench, but I still need one more that will enable me to make rifles before I can get all the way to a rifle. So hopefully that will be a goal that I can accomplish in the next episode. There's only one. Let's get it. There's more than one. But not much more than one. Well, that's where I'm going to leave this episode. We got our first non-muzzle loader gunpowder weapon, and we have an absolute battery of blunderbusses in case uh, the first shot doesn't do the trick. We got a few other useful things from the trader, and we're well on our way to iron tools and a rifle. Hopefully, we'll be able to do that in tomorrow's episode. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, please give it a like. Let me know what you thought in the, of what I've been doing in the comments. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more content, and if you'd like to help me grow my channel, then share it with your friends. Goodbye and God bless.